Well, because what happens when you go to work and have fun, that releases energy. Okay, every one of us is walking around with this reservoir of positive energy that has to be released. Okay, when somebody is nice to you or when you are having fun with the people you work for, that energy gets released and it's like you're a new person, all right? And so in many organizations, work is seen as a form of punishment that I have to go through to get my paycheck so I can have, go on a vacation uh, for two weeks out of the year. And unfortunately, that's, uh, that doesn't get the best out of people. There's a reason 79% uh, of the people worldwide are not engaged. It's because it's no fun, okay? Um, but when you have fun, um, it's contagious. Your energy level is higher. Everybody else's energy level is higher, which means they, they have the wherewithal to work harder. They're more creative. They're more innovative. So now we come up with better ideas for products, services, and customer um, um, experiences. And as I mentioned earlier, what this creates is a competitive edge that competitors have a hard time copying. I remember seeing the uh, CEOs of Delta Airlines, US Air, United, and there's one other, that I, oh, Continental. And all of them were being asked at different times by reporters, why can't you be successful like Southwest? And they said, you know, we've copied, we can copy everything Southwest does, and we have. The old CEO used to let them come in and look around and, and anything they want to look at, because he had nothing to hide. And he says, we've copied all that. And then here comes the kicker. He said, however, the only thing we can't copy is the loyalty of their employees. And I want to say, hello? That's the one thing, if they copy that, that's where the magic is. It's in the, in the employees. You capture that magic, everything else falls into place. But see, they missed the point. They thought if they can't, they copied the formula. No, there's no magic in the formula. The magic is in the people. You get the people excited, they're the ones that make things happen. And that's why fun is such an important thing. And that's how people get their batteries recharged at work. Okay. Um, earlier, you brought up the concept of the Maslow hierarchy. And, and in your program, and, and pardon the pun, you actually are wrecking the Maslow hierarchy. Um, how or why is that hierarchy failing business? And how are you restructuring that pyramid okay. with your program? Well, the hierarchy really didn't fail business. Business just never uh, understood it or took it seriously. See, needs are the only thing that motivate us. Nothing else does. It's, um, it, people are wanting animals, okay? From birth to death, uh, we spend all our time uh, working, if you will, to pursue needs. And once one need is satisfied, another one fall, uh, comes back and replaces it automatically. And so from birth to death, we are constantly in a chase for, to satisfy needs that are important to us. Um, as I said, what Maslow did when he put this hierarchy, he discovered it. And, and it's, for the most part, I think true. Uh, our physiological needs are important to us, but once we're, we have plenty of water and food and clothes, um, they no longer motivate our behavior. Then the next level safety kicks in. Well, once we feel secure in our, in our situation, we don't have to worry about being shot, we don't have to worry about making, uh, finding a job, we have financial security, then the next level kicks in. And the social needs, now basically that's your belongingness and love need. Uh, the need to be accepted, the need to be um, um, given, receive love, those kind of things. Now what Maslow left off, no, he didn't intentionally, he dances around it, just didn't say it, uh, basically, People have a need to be treated as equals. That's what being accepted is. You're, you're, you're accepted for who you are. I'm not better than you are. Uh, but he, that was never dealt with directly in any of that. I went back and read his original paper that was published in 1943, and I didn't find that, okay? Um, the, once the social needs are satisfied, the next level kicks in, which is your esteem needs. And he did touch on this one um, because he talks about the need for self-respect. And you get that from competence in doing things. And you, you build your self-esteem by through achievements uh, with actions that you control. So a big part of that he didn't mention was freedom. Well, but that didn't translate. Uh, and, and he even used the word autonomy. Well, autonomy means I'm free to determine how I do my job. That was not dealt with directly by people writing business books. Um, so basically, people don't like being told how to do their job but they like figuring out how to do it for themselves. Uh, and that's a very important need because as I accomplish things 
through um, my own discretion, through my own efforts, by deciding how I'm going to apply my effort, I learn, and that's how I grow, and that makes it exciting. And the last need, uh, the, the self-actualization one, that's, um, you know, basically he said it's the need uh, to become more of what you're capable of becoming. As I think he said in his paper, he says, a poet needs to write poetry. An artist needs to paint. Well, what he meant was, uh, in my opinion, is people had to have meaning in their lives. They had to have a feeling that their lives counted for something. And another way of translating that in business, people want to, don't want a job, they want a cause that they can get excited about. They want to be part of something special. And that came out in the Towers Parent Report, it was 88,600 employees. They wanted to be, work for an organization that was striving for excellence. Well, excellence means we are somebody, uh, we're doing something very special. And so Maslow didn't intentionally leave them out. Those are the important things when it comes to getting people excited about coming to work and working hard. And I, what I try to do in a program now is to show how the traditional management methodology, the control paradigm, does not deal with those needs. And as a result, people are demotivated. And I try to give them a, a management system that capitalizes on these needs. The traditional method uh, satisfies needs that are already satisfies that are already satisfied most people and denies the satisfaction of needs that are important. That's why it doesn't work. And with my new method, destination work, it, it provides opportunities for the satisfaction of needs that are extremely important. That's why people get so excited about coming to work, working hard, and that's why they get their batteries recharged at work.